to teach or not to teach is this week's question. You can be better than you are. You could be swinging on a star. Metaphysical practitioners are constantly asked about taking on students and mentees. This, for many of us, is our way of being of maximum service. But we're now in the age of the instant mystic. Certain ancient teachings that in the past were only available to very specific, gifted, hand-picked students are now available to everyone. And this is awesome. However, when it comes to teaching, there is a risk that we take on with students and mentees. And that risk is that many of you do not want to put in the time and the effort that it takes to learn some of the practices. You might take a few classes and feel you're just ready to take on the world and you really haven't taken the time to integrate the knowledge. So when a well-intentioned but not very well-prepared newbie starts going around and setting up a business and starting to read for people or healing people and they suck at it, guess who that blows back on? And to be totally honest with you, for me, I find that maybe one in every 20 students is actually serious enough and committed enough to fully understand the things that they need to, to be a good reader or healer. We wanna teach, but we also have the integrity of the business to maintain. So, how does a teacher handle this? Well, we can be like some and just not teach. I had a graphologist tell me one time that she refused to teach anybody. People were coming to her and taking one or two classes and going out and telling everybody that she taught them everything and they sucked at it and her name was getting tarnished because of it. So she just flat out refused to teach. Another choice, we can continue to teach and we could just have students sign waivers absolving us from any of their stupid actions that they take when they're not fully prepared to do what they're being trained to do. But personally, that's a little too complicated for me and I really like to think that people have the best intentions and that they will do the right thing. However, these days, kind of wondering about that. So what can you do to help your mystical arts teachers continue to teach? Someone who's willing to take the time to put together a workshop, hours and hours of their time, then spend all the time marketing and advertising it, renting space to hold the class, and then to stand up in front of you to share this so that you can be empowered, deserves respect. And they deserve to be heard. And they deserve to be paid. But that's another whole video. Now, I know I sound like an old person when I say, you know, years ago we didn't have 20 metaphysical classes you could take every week and a whole bunch of stores all around. No, we had to seek out those handful of people who actually knew this stuff. We had to want it so bad that we would go to the ends of the earth to find those teachers. It means something to be taught. And I don't think people understand that today. Teachers are a gift. Another thing you can do is be honest with yourself. Just face it. You may not have what it takes to be an astrologer, a tarot reader, a medium, or a Reiki master. And a good teacher is going to point that out. So don't get your little feelings hurt if your teacher jerks your chain once in a while. Some of my best teachers and mentors throughout my life have at some point or another hurt my little feelings. And I have those people who took the time and the care to be honest with me to thank for being as good as I am. I think I'm pretty good and they happen to think I'm pretty good too. Another thing you can do to keep your teachers teaching in this business is always think about how what you're doing reflects upon your teacher. Are you doing something that's going to make them proud? Are you doing something they told you not to do? This is intuitive work. And guess what? The work isn't on other people. It's on you. So be ready because you're going to change and you're going to learn things about yourself in order to better serve people. So don't be in a big hurry to get out there and start building a client base. Take your time and know what you're doing first. That's the best gift that you can give your teacher. And thanks for watching this episode of Cosmic Common Sales. Now go hug your teacher, but subscribe to this channel first. Until next time, Keep an open mind, but not so open your brains fall out.